Statistics and Excel, Roulette Probability Example, Part Number 6. Get ready and some coffee, because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one, because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com or in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point just creating the tables as we go or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint for probability, statistics, or the roulette wheel in general. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank sheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the sheet as we go forward practicing our Excel tools as we do so. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we have done and where we will be going. So we're looking at the roulette wheel, remembering we're thinking about probability in general, games of chance being a perfect test to test out those concepts because they were constructed based on probability. Once we get a handle of those concepts, we can apply them to multiple different areas within statistics. So whether you're interested in the roulette wheel or not, and just interested in probability, it's still a great game to be practicing with. So as we can see, there are multiple things that we can be betting on within the roulette wheel, but they're all basically independent from each other. So we're an analyzing each of them independently, and we've come out to the idea that the expected value, the average value over the long term, is typically going to be this 0.0526 percent which seems kind of counterintuitive at first because of course you can't really lose five cents per bet generally because you're going to bet something like a dollar or above a dollar winning a dollar or losing a dollar or winning ten dollars or losing ten dollars and so on and so forth however on average we're expecting to move towards that average point of losing about 5.26 per play and we're now in the process of testing that out by basically doing empirical tests and basically running the numbers with random generation tools within Excel, that helping us to practice both our concepts of statistics as well as how we can maybe even construct a game of our own if we wanted to use the random generation tool or run uh, uh, tools within Excel. So let's go to the practice tab. It has these pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting in the blank tab. This is what we have done thus far. We analyzed the betting on red and black and we came out to that number for the long-term average for the expected value. Same with the best one out of uh, 12 and then the bet on one number, same concept. We analyzed if we had, if we had a strategy of betting two times, both on red which we'll talk about later. And then we started to think about, okay, let's run some g random generation uh, of a mock game, starting with betting on one number and see if our results on average, if we ran it 500 times, comes out to an average of the expected value. And we see that it came out pretty close there. We did a similar process with the reds and the blacks trying to construct something so that we can test this empirically and again we came out that uh, the long-term average uh, looks like it gets more accurate as we have more times of playing the game 
Now we're going to do a similar thing for betting on the first 12 numbers or the second 12 numbers. That's going to be right here, 1 through 12, 2 through 12, uh, 3 through 12. And we've, we've ran the averages here. We said on the payout, you usually get two for one on the payout. So the expected value we calculated first by calculating the odds. You have 12 out of 38 numbers because there's 36 numbers plus two for the zero and double zero. That comes out to 31.58% chance of winning, which means there's a 26 out of 38 chance of losing or 68.42%. That, of course, adds up to 100. The expected value then, if you win, you get $2, but that's only gonna happen 31.58% of the time. Comes out, if you multiply those out, to 0.6316. Uh, if you lose, you only lose a dollar, but that's gonna happen 68.42% of the time. So here's the multiplying those two out, and of course, we come up to that expected value of 0.0526 which is what we expect to happen if we were to play this game over and over again, which is what we want to test empirically this time. All right, so let's do that. Let's go on over here and we're gonna go all the way to the right and let's make another skinny column for the CG uh, skinny. So I'm gonna select this skinny column here, skinny column, home tab and paint brush and make another skinny. All right, so we're gonna say this is gonna be bet on first 12 numbers that's going to be our header let's make that black and white home tab font group making the bucket drop down black and the letters are going to be white as is our typical custom all right so the numbers that we have on the wheel you will recall numbers let's just map them out again and we're going to say let's make this black white centered we've got one we've got two let's select those two we're going to drag down to 38 numbers dragging down with the fill handle to 38 numbers 38 two, 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 right there now these last two represent the zero and the double zero let's make them a different color like green just to indicate that to us so we have 36 actual numbers one through 36 and then a zero and a double zero okay let's make these blue and bordered as is our typical custom if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors standard you can make it any color you want by the way but i like the blue i like the blue it just looks nice it makes me calm it calms me down calms me down it's nice all right let's then uh make uh a idea of like the buckets that we're looking at so i'm going to make a skinny ci just doing it this way make it a skinny ai or CI was I on? What am I getting AI? I'm thinking of artificial intelligence or something. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. So this is going to be the buckets. Let's say bucket one. We're going to have numbers one through 12. So that's going to be the first 12 numbers. And then bucket two, we want to start on number 13 now. And it's going to go 13 up 12 numbers. So, so 13 plus 12 i'm going to say minus one because it's starting on 13 and that's going to take us to 24 and then bucket three is going to be 25 which we could say it's going to be this plus one and that's going to go up from 25 plus 12 minus one or 36 so there's the 36 numbers and then bucket four is going to be everything above 36 36 plus one and it's going to go up to 38 right or above 38 is the last number so this is basically what we can bet on and you can you could bet on you could bet on we're going to analyze as though we're betting on the first 12 numbers getting one through 12 of course there's 38 total numbers if you bet on the second 12 numbers it's the same calculation in terms of probability because you still have 13 through 24 12 numbers out of 38 you could bet on the last 12 numbers which is 25 through 36 out of 38 numbers that we have in total let's make those blue and border those are our buckets we're going to go font group border blue let's make these a little bit tighter a little bit smaller so we're not wasting space i don't like wasting space man you got to be efficient with this stuff 
All right, let's run, let's run some random simulations and see what we get. So I'm gonna make a skinny. Let's make a skinny over here. I'm gonna copy this skinny, format paint that to the CM. And let's say we're gonna count. So how many of these are we gonna do? Let's make that black and white. Home tab, font group, dropping down the bucket to black, white, alignment, center. We'll do 500 of them again because that's just what we've been doing. Let's select those two, drag it down 500 times. You could just see the little little thing that's telling us how many we've got. And we're going down to 500 so we know exactly how many of these test rolls, test spins. We're not rolling dice, we're spinning the wheel, man. Get the terminology right. These are spins. How many spins we we talking about? 500, 500 spins, that's what we're gonna do. That's a lot of spins, don't worry. Excel just does them like real fast. And uh, so no problem. Home tab, paintbrush, and we'll bring it over. So now we want a random spin. So we just do our random number generation again equals the random between one is the bottom number and 38. There are 36 numbers. 37 and 38 are gonna represent for us the zero and the double zero, enter. Double clicking on that to just copy it on down. I'm gonna get off those cells and then hit control shift down just to double check that that looks good. It went all the way down to the bottom so it does look good, it looks fantastic. It looks amazing, not just good. What are you talking about? Anyways, if you notice it's recalculating every time here. If you wanted it to be static, to not recalculate every time. You could select the same thing, copy it, and you could paste it just values only to get a static random generation that doesn't keep on changing. But we're okay with it changing right now. We're gonna use that to our advantage. We're gonna say, I'm cool with the change. I, I roll with change, man. I, I roll with the, with the times. I roll with these crazy times. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna say Control Shift down and we're gonna go to the home tab, font group, and select the drop down. We're gonna make this blue and bordered. Okay, so there's our random rolls. So now let's count. We wanna basically count our outcomes, the outputs. So in the first roll, we got a 13. On the second, we got a 33. On the third, we got a 36. We're trying to analyze as though we're betting on one of these, possibly thinking about just the first one. So if I got a 13, we lose, right? If I got a 33, we lose. Uh, we need something out of between one here. We win here, we win here, and so on and so forth. So let's count these in our buckets on the right. So I'm gonna make another skinny. Let's make a skinny to do this. Home tab, clipboard, let's make a skinny CP. CP is a skinny and we'll say our buckets. Now, because we're gonna use a, a uh, function for the, the, the a spill array for a frequency, I just need the end of our buckets. So our buckets are just, I'm just gonna list the last bit of the bucket and the spill array is gonna give me everything uh, up to that number, right? So I'm gonna copy that down and then I'll copy it down to this. And I could say over here because it's going to spill over over that uh, over, but there won't be anything in the over. That's just kind of like our check number. And so that's going to be the buckets. We're going to have our count, and then we're going to make a percent column. Let's make these our headers, selecting them to do so. Home tab, font group, bucket drop down. We're making that black, white alignment, center it. All right, let's count this out then. Let's count it out. So we're gonna use our frequency to do it. We could use a count and we'll probably do that in a second, but right now we're gonna use a spill array. So we're gonna say frequency and then tab. This is a, an array formula. So we're gonna put our cursor on the random number generation. We did 500 of them, control shift down and then, and then control backspace to get me back up top and then comma to the next argument. I just want my bins. These are my bins. And then I'm just gonna say enter and it just spills it on down and it goes over the last bin that I chose because it's everything over 38, which is zero, which is kind of our check figure. So let's go ahead and then say that we're gonna say then the total, uh, the total is gonna be the percentages or let's sum them up equals the sum. 
This should add up to 500. That's our check figure. Are there 500 of them? Good. That makes me feel that the frequency calculation uh, is hopefully done properly. So now let's say we're just going to take the percent of the total equals the count out of 500. And that 500, I want it to be static as I copy it down. F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, so that when I copy it down, it'll be 152 divided by 500. Enter. Let's make that a percent to recognize, percentify to recognize, home tab number group, percentify to recognize. And then we're going to double click, add some decimals, and then I'll copy that down, copy it down, copy that, Roger out, Roger that. And then we're going to say, let's sum it up and it should add up to one. I can just hit Alt Enter. That's the fastest way to do the sum with the keyboard. That's the coolest way. If you do that in the office, people like women swarm around your around your office desk and they're like, oh my goodness, this person is a, this guy's amazing. And then we're going to say, now note what we expect to happen here is basically we had a 12 out of 38, right? Odds. So we had 12 out of 38 each roll, 12 out of 38. And so we can percentify that and boom, boom. So that's kind of what we expect, 3158 on each of these. So we'll do that. Uh, so let me put that actual down below. So let's put it down here. Let's put the, well, first let's get, I'm getting ahead of myself. Slow down, let's make this blue and borders. You gotta make it look nice first. People will not continue watching if it's ugly we're going to make it blue and it has to match the other stuff okay now now let's calculate the expected odds which are going to be equal to 12 right we have 12 picks out of 38 that's what we expect to happen each rule independently right so that's going to be a percent let's percentify that home tab percentify to recognize and then, so that's what we would expect if I rolled it a bunch of times, our, our odds, our outcomes, we would expect to have that same ratio compared to the total. So the difference, let's say the difference, and I could do it for each of them, the, the difference for the, first, for, for the first bucket versus the second bucket and the third bucket, right? I could say this equals the 33 minus the 31, duh, duh, add some decimals, duh, 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 and then I can copy it, and then I can do the same. Let's double click on it. Let's make that second number F4 absolute. So when I copy it down, that second number doesn't move down. Then let's copy it down. See if it does what we expect. Boom, boom, I think it does. So the general idea are these three buckets are the ones that we could be betting on. We would expect them to have the odds of 31.58. Remember that this last bucket isn't the one we're analyzing to be betting on. Those are the two numbers, 37 uh, and 38, that kind of skew the odds a bit, right? So when we bet on the first 12, the second 12, and the third 12, we're betting on the numbers 1 through 36. And then we have those other two numbers, the zero and the double zero, that, which we are representing as numbers uh, 37 and 38. All right, let's make these blue and bordered, blue and bordered there, blue and bordered here. Boom, everything is looking uniform and nice. So let's now think about the uh, expected value. So expected value that we would expect to happen if we did this 500 times. So let's go back up top. We're going to say black and white. That's going to be our header. Let's say this is going to be our expected. Let's just call it expected value. Let's call it EV, EV per spin. So what's our expected value per spin? I'm just going to say equals because we calculated it over here. So we're spinning these things and way over here somewhere somewhere so here we have it so this is the one where we calculated that uh uh the odds were 31 to 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 win 68 to lose but they're gonna pay us a two for one to win so it's two times a 38 percent chance of winning boom and then one times 68 chance of losing negative one 
that gives us our expected value over the long term of 0.0526 or 5.26 cents per spin on average, which doesn't tell us much about one spin, but now we spun it 500 times. So we would expect that we're getting pretty close to that possibly after that many spins. So if I go to the home tab, number group, percentify, add some decimals. Well, wait, don't percentify it. That's not a percentify one. Just add the decimals. Okay, so then, so then how many spins did we have? We spun it 500 times, 500 times. So the expected value after 500 spins is an average of 5.26 cents per spin times 500 times. That's around 26. Let's add some pennies, 26.32. All right, so we're going to say let's make that uh, bordered and uh, blue. Let's look at what has actually happened. What actually happened here? We have uh, the bet. Let's say we're going to bet on, we're going to pick one. Let's say we bet on the first 12. So first 12 numbers. That's gonna, what we're going to be betting on or imagining we're betting on. We'll make that home tab font group black and white for the headers. So what can happen? We can, we have the wins, we've got the losses when we did this 500 times and the total. So what were the wins? We can pick that up up here because it would be this 148, which is gonna keep changing. But I also wanna just show how you might be able to pick this up instead of using the spill array uh, frequency, we can use the count. So if I was to count this, I wanna count all of the numbers that are uh, below 12 in this case. Right, so I'm going to say, all right, how could I do that? This is going to be equal to the count if brackets. And now I need the range. I'm going to pick up this range of all the random numbers 500 times. Control shift down, control backspace to get me back to where I was. And then comma, what's the criteria? It has to be less than. Now you might say, you could say less than or equal to 12. But you need another argument to do that. It's faster to just say it needs to be less than 12. There's no decimals involved here. So I'm just saying just less than, less, I'm sorry, less than 13 is going to be 12 down to zero. But it's not going to like that because now I put this sign in here and it sees that as a text and I have to put quotes around any text field. It's still not going to like it because if I have a text field next to a number, then it wants us typically to have a tie up or an and to tie those two things together. So there we have it, boom. There's the 155, that should match what we come up to up top, it does, that looks good. Now, of course, the losses I could calculate would just be 500, because that's the total amount of spins, minus the 155, and of course the total would then add up to 500, uh, but, that means that we're, if I do it that way, I don't get my nice little plug test figure because I'd like to actually calculate the losses and then add them up. So what can I do? To, so what are the losses? Well, the way I have it set up here, everything that's greater than uh, 12 is a loss because the zero and the double zero are being represented by numbers 37 and 38. So I can just do, I could do the same kind of formula, count if brackets and we'll choose this control shift down control backspace and then there's our and then we're going to say comma what's the criteria we want it to be greater than now i could say greater than or equal to like 13 but it's easier to just say greater than 12 because there are no decimals again if there were decimals it might mess it up a little bit more but there's no decimal so everything greater than 12 will be 13 and above right and then I could just say, okay, I'm going to have to put quotes around this because Excel sees that as a text and I have to tie it together to the thing after the text, which is going to use an and, a not, what I see it as is a not, to do that and enter. So now that should match uh, these, uh, all of these, this, this, and this, 356. So it could be the second 12, the third 12, or the last two. And and that would lose, right? 356, 356, the total adds up to 500. 
So that looks muy B to the N, B N looks good in other words. Why we're we're just being man, home tab, font group. Why settle for just being when you can muy be in? Home tab, font group, you can muy be in. I don't like just being man like some hippie. I muy be in. I muy be in. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about. What was I doing here? So that means that the payout, what's the payout? The payout is gonna be equal to wins. We get two for one, I believe. Let's just go over here to where we saw that. If I win, Every time we won on this game, they gave us two bucks, two dollars, if we bet the one dollar, two for one. And on the losses, we lose one dollar, one dollar if we're betting a dollar. Obviously, you can have the same ratio if you bet more than that, but we're going to lose one dollar, two for one. So in this case, we won. Uh, 157 times so 157 that's going to change but times two there it is these are our totals and we lost this number of times times negative one and that means that we are having a return or a loss in this case of 62 dollars let's add some decimals let's look at the difference between that and what we expected to happen, which was this number. So we expect this to happen on average over a large amount of plays, which 500 is fairly large, minus what actually happened. It's not gonna be perfect, okay? Life isn't perfect, man. There's, there's probability involved in it and other stuff. I don't know what other stuff is there, but I know there's some weird probability stuff. That's clear. So we've got, see, but you would think that sometimes this would be positive and sometimes negative uh, because, of course, it's going to be going around what we would expect the average to be after the 500 rule. So it looks like that's pretty close to what basically we would uh, be expecting to happen after 500 rules. And the idea, of course, being that in the long term, the game being played more and more, we would expect to lose on average this 5.26 cents uh, per roll, right? That's going to be the idea which we're kind of empirically kind of showing here, which is the strategy, of course, of the casino, given the fact that even if one player doesn't play consistently all the time, they've got a bunch of players that are playing consistently all the time, and therefore they can possibly average out fairly accurately what their actual returns will be depending or based on the number of bets that are being placed, right? Because the return is about... 5.26 on average on the long term. Okay, so if we let's go ahead and make this uh, home tab font group bordered and blue. And then these are gonna be blue and bordered. And let's go ahead and save that. Let's check the spelling while we're here. Why not do that? I'm a spelling master. Okay, and so there's that. So next time uh, we'll do the, con we'll continue this on. But we'll think about what if we made a strategy of two bets uh, and think about some concepts with, with that strategy in, uh, in a following presentation. In other words, we ran this scenario over here on uh, the, the, the two bets, expected value to win two bets. So if we have a strategy that we're going to bet two times, both on, say, red and we repeated that strategy over and over again, what would be, you know, the expected results on the long term. So we'll take a look at that.